putting, and we're rolling the ball up and down the fingers. And down into the palm. And onto the pad of the pinky. And the thumb. And then down to the wrists. And across the knuckles. And we'll take the ball into one hand and squeeze the index finger and thumb on the ball. And then the middle finger and thumb. The ring finger. And then the pinky. If you don't get a lot of pressure, you'll find it'll increase over time. So just press and then back to the other hand, index finger and thumb. Middle finger. Ring finger. And pinky. And let's toss the ball up in the air, varying the hands that we catch it with, the heights, bring it down, move it around. Try to trick yourself. What I did. Oh. And we're back. Up and down. Three, two, one, and we'll put the ball on the floor. Assess how your feet are feeling. Make a note of how the ankles feel, the knees, the hips. Step on the ball right in the middle of the foot and press down three times. And go up to the knuckles and press down once on each knuckle going across. And then roll the ball across the knuckles. Pick the ball to the top of the heel, pivot on the toes and roll it across the top of the heel. Place the ball just below the first knuckle and press down. Slide it back slightly about an inch to the side of the top of the heel and press down once. And then over to the middle of the fifth metatarsal, press down once. Then roll down each of the bones starting at the knuckle to the top of the heel. And then just scribble it all about, move it all around the bottom of the foot. Three, two, one, and release. Reassess, see if there's any difference in how that foot feels compared to the other. And then step on the other, on the ball with the other foot and press down three times right in the middle of the foot. Bring it up to the knuckles, press down on each going across. Roll across the knuckles. Bring the ball to the top of the heel and press and roll across the top of the heel by pivoting on the toes. 
bring the ball to just below the first knuckle and press down. Side of the top of the heel, press down. Middle of the fifth metatarsal and press down. <laughs> Come on, push your dad. Roll down each of the bones. And ribble all around. Three, two, one. Get the ball out of the way. Reassess both feet. And then shake the tree. Just a warm up in the National Qigong Association's five treasures. Movement with the uh, put together after uh, 9 11, actually. Three, two, one, and center. Take a breath, twist at the waist, swing the arms back and forth. Got a light fist in my hips, top of my hips here where the gluteus medius is loosening that up. You don't have to do that, you can go higher. Three, two, one, center with some ocean wave breathing. Inhale, as the hands come up to the heart, exhale up to the heart, and they go out extending a little bit further. Inhale, exhale, about 45 degrees. Inhale, a little higher. And we're coming up to shoulder height. Gonna do shoulder height again. And then we're gonna start coming down. And as we're inhaling and the hands are coming up, if you can come up on your toes and then back on your heels as you come down. Take a breath, put your fingers and thumb together, put the base of the spine on the same side, step out about 45 degrees and you're gonna gather in starlight. The lower down to the end the heart, throat, third eye, and then three times around the crown. And then we start coming down again, third eye, throat, heart, Lower down to end and center. Same thing on the other side. Fingers, thumb at the base of the spine. Lower down to end, heart, throat, third eye, three times around the crown. And coming down. And I'm going to center that. And as we do, we'll either walk or march or jog. And actually, I'm surprised that I am able to jog with my ankle. Good. So we're going to get the heartbeat going a little here. Do what you're comfortable with doing. And you can continue to do exactly what you're doing, or you can speed it up a little with different exercises that we have. Like sprinting. I don't think I'm going to do that today, or popping, or side jacks, or rapid squats. 
that you can continue to do exactly what you're doing. The main thing is to stay safe. Always. So what will I do today? I think I'm going to do some graphic squats. We're going to be doing isometric exercises in the main class. So you want to have a strap or a towel or a cloth um, nearby for when we do those. But for now, do whatever you feel like doing, including exactly what you've been doing, you get the heart rate going, and we'll do 30 rapid squats. One. That's 10. And 30. Take a couple of breaths. Interlace the fingers. Put your hands up over your head. Reach up. You can come up on your toes, otherwise, just reach. Come on down. If you don't have back issues, you can bend back. Otherwise, just reach straight up. Back to center and to one side. Then bend to the other. Back to center, lower the hands to the chest and push out, separating the scapula. Come on down. Interlace your fingers behind your back and raise your hands up behind you, squeezing the shoulder blades together. To go a little higher. Come on down and shrug. Roll back your shoulders. Squeezing the shoulder blades together again. And roll forward. Separating the shoulder blades. Extend your arms and rotate in a circle. And then switch directions. Put one palm down, one palm up, and flip flop. Bring one arm across the body, press in at the elbow. And then the other. And then bring one arm behind the back, press down and in on the elbow. And then the other. Grab both elbows up top and rock side to side with your hips.
extend your arm with your fingers up and pull back on the fingers. Fingers facing down, pull back. Flop the wrists, press in. Above the knuckles, wiggle the fingers. Make a fist, wiggle, fist. Other hand, same thing, fingers up. Fingers down. Flop the wrist, press above the knuckles, wiggle the fingers, make a fist. Come on down and rotate the neck in one direction. And then the other. Nod. And then bring your ear to your shoulder on one side and then the other, or at least towards it. You can hit it a lot more flexible than I am. Keep the shoulders down. Come back to center, tuck in your chin, turn to one side, lower your chin towards your collarbone, and hold. Then look up, chin is still tucked. Back to center, look the other way. Lower the chin. Raise it up. Back to center, still tucked. Tech, like the pigeon. Two, one. And then let's do a side lunge in one direction, stretching the inner thigh. Pulling onto something if you need to. Chair, countertop, or pole if you've got one. And then go the other way. And then come on up and let's grab that pole. Today, um, we're going to do the gym stick routine. So we start with what's called dynamic swimmers, rotating the stick up above the head, behind the head, and back out in one direction. And then the other direction. And then bring it up overhead, straight up, and then go back and forth side to side. And then bring it down to the waist and twist at the waist. And then bring the stick down to just above the knees, bring your hands around in front between the knees. You're hinging at the waist, keep your head up and your spine neutral and pull up. Good. 
and then bring the stick around front. Hold on with two hands at or near the top of the stick. Walk back, hinge at the waist again, and stretch the upper body and the arms. Come on up, bring the stick with one hand across the body, bring the other arm up underneath the armpit and grab the shoulder, hinge at the waist, and tug gently on the shoulder. Do the same thing the other way. And come on up, bring the stick to the side of the foot, push out with the top hand as you pull in with the bottom hand. And you're hinging again slightly at the waist. And then do the same thing on the other side. Pushing out with the top hand, pulling in with the bottom, hinging. Bring the stick in front of one foot, move the toes of that foot about six inches away, drop the top of the stick to the collarbone, slide your hand down the stick, and then raise the sole of that foot off the ground. And you can wiggle it side to side to increase the stretch if that feels doable. If not, just lift it. Come on up. Same thing on the other side. And come up. Then press the sole of the first foot against the stick to increase stretch on the calf muscles. And then the other foot. And then bring one foot up by the shin, ankle, or toes to stretch the quads. Then the other. And we're going to bring the first foot in front, press the knee back, in slightly at the waist, stretching the glutes. Come on down, switch position of the stick, bring the other foot up, knee back, hinge at the waist. And come on back up. Bring the stick out in front. Hold on with two hands, one hand or a finger or two at the top. Come up on your toes. Hold for a second and go back on your heel. And we're going to do this 15 times, holding for a second in each position. And then we're rocking back and forth. Four for me. Eight, 14 and 15. All right, let's put the stick down. If you've got a cloth or a strap or a belt, you want to grab it and have it uh, near you. We're not going to use it 
right in the beginning, but have it available. First exercise we're going to do for isometrically is to strengthen the neck, make uh, two fists, put them underneath your chin, put the tongue on the roof of the mouth, and press down into your fists and hold. Keeping your head back. And release. Now we're going to do a low squat. You can use a chair to hold on to. You can get behind it with two hands. You can do it with one hand on the side. You can use a pole if you need some support. Spread your legs a little bit further than hip width and point them out about 45 degrees and go as low as you can. If it's just to here, that's fine. The idea is to have the heels of your feet on the ground and to hold for another 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and come on up. Now we're going to do some leg extension curls, and you can do this in a chair, or you can do this on the ground. I'll show you how to do it in a chair first. If you're doing it on the ground, you want to be lying on your back, but in the chair, you're pressing down with your top foot as you press up with the bottom foot going up and press against each other as you come back down. So you're going to do three of those. I'm going to get down on the ground and do it. <laughs> and two. And the blessing. One more. Three. And I'm going to reverse the position of the feet and do three more. All right, roll over onto all fours. You want your palms underneath your shoulders. We're just going to come up off our knees about an inch off the floor and hold for 10, 9, 8, 7. Keep your stomach engaged. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and come down. And we'll get up. You got your strap or piece of cloth. Make two fists close to one another on the uh, material that you've got, and then pull up and pull down as you come a little. Cross your body diagonally up to the other shoulder, and pulling in either direction as you come back down to the hip. Then go to the other side, pull up, and you're pulling in both directions again as you come back down. That bottom hand is winning on this one. Then hold in front, go side to side as you raise it. We're going to go up to the forehead. Again, you're pulling in either direction. And coming back down. Now 
All right, let's put that uh, piece of apparatus aside, put our hands together in prayer position and just press in. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then make like Charles Atlas here, bicep curl. One. It's not a curl, but pop those biceps. And ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Shake it out. We're going to do Stephen Coe's ninth and final energizing breath. One of these days we'll do all nine together for a session. But uh, for now, you want to have your feet hip width apart. We're going to bring our Hands up to the crest of the hip bone. Your fingers are facing in towards the abdomen. Your thumb is uh, facing back towards your kidneys. You're going to inhale and then exhale. And after you exhale, you're going to go, not don't breathe in again. We're going to tense our muscles and go left, right, left, right, left, right. Center and then inhale. So remember when we come up, we inhale, tense our muscles, exhale, and hold that exhale as we do the three left to right. Ready? We're going to do three rounds of that. Tense. And breathe. Take two normal breaths. One more. And breathe. And breathe. And we'll finish off with some more of the five treasures, rubbing our hands together. Actually, this is Chun Liang Al Wong's Chi Ball routine. Going in the Chi Ball, letting it dance us around. Shifting weight from one foot to the other. However those feet want to move, however the chi ball wants to move. And centering. Two breaths. And we're going to open our hearts. Hands out at the heart coming in. Exhaling, inhaling as they come in. Exhale, inhale. Going forward on the toes if you can as we go out. Back on the heels as we come in. And then hold on this inhale and exhale out. Descend out. All that lovely required. Again, up on the toes as you go out, back on the heels as you come in. One more. And center. Two breaths. Three. 
Then you're going to bring down chi from above. Exhaling out, inhaling in. And then we're going to go down and gather it up from below, keeping the spine neutral and straight as we do. Head up. Two. And as Chuyang Al Wong is wont to do, we are going to celebrate with an ah. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. You're welcome, Mitchak. Welcome, Shimon. Hope that was good. We'll keep to explanations a little bit more than usual. Great Thanks. to have you. I've got um, five Tibetans coming up. Um, you want to stick around and watch those um, in the after class. So I'm going to keep this right here. Everything has modifications. So the modification on the first five Tibetan is to twist at the waist and swing the arms. But if you feel up to it, you can do up to 11 twirls. And then stop, take a couple of breaths. And we're going to get down on the floor. Uh, I will meet you. So we're on our back. In the regular position, I'll do the regular first. The hands are by the side and the legs are extended. And you come up with your head, neck, and shoulders at the same time that your legs come up straight and go back down. Let's go back down. And we do that 11 times. So modifications are you put the soles of the feet on the floor. If you need support on your lower back, put the hands down below your lower spine there. If you need support in the neck, put them on your skull. And I'll do it with behind my back here. Your head, neck, and shoulders come up at the same time as your soles come off the floor, and then you go back down. So you can make or any sort of modification you want. I'm going to do six regular and five modified. Thirty now. Here's a modification. And then you take your breaths. And roll around onto your knees. Put your hands behind your thighs or on your feet. Modification on this one would be just right back on your knees because you can't do back extensions because you're still resting your sort of middle spine condition, but eventually from coming back into your back. But if you can do a back extension, come back. 
and forward that's one. Up to eleven. Oh, stop. Seven. Eight. Eight. And eleven. And then take two press. Sit down. Now the hands can be behind your back with the fingers facing forward. Some people find that easier as a modification. Normally they're by your hips. Um, I alternate between the fingers facing forward and then turning them around. In a modified position, the soldier feet are on the floor again, if you come into an inverted table. Unmodified, you extend this and you come up. I find the unmodified easier, so I'm going to do that. One. Whatever works for you, what you should do. Two. And, and 11. Take a couple of breaths. And then come around and we'll forth again. This is the last official Tibetan, though we do some wine there. Uh, wine down with a couple of other. Moves. So the modification on this one is to go from the table position into a cobra. You can do that 11 times. Unmodified, you do a down dog into an up dog. I'll do six modified and five yoga. Six. Now I'm going to come around and cross your legs, however feels comfortable for you this morning. And it's one in front of the other, one on the top of the other. It never works. We're going to rotate six times in one direction and then five in the other. And you can do that either sitting up or bending down. And uh, at the end, on the last round, we're going to stretch out and do two rounds of and not one round, I'm sorry. The box three knee in the middle, then over the left knee, and over the right knee. The box three knee is you inhale for four, count to four, hold for the count of four, exhale for the count of four, hold for the count of four, and then we go over the left knee and do the same on the right knee. Right, here we go. Six circles in one direction. Locations, between the sitting up, four, five, six, and then the other way. Mm -hmm. 
four. And the last one, we're going to stretch out in front. Inhale, four. Hold. Exhale. Hold. And go over to the left side. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Right side. Same thing. And coming up. And then finally, just reverse the position of the legs. Whatever was in front goes behind whatever was on top. That's the way you were today goes on the bottom. We'll do five in the original direction, six in the reverse, and then do one round of box two. Nine and then six in the other way. Back in the last one. Six stretching out in hand. Exhale. Now hold it. Exhale. Hold it. So let me. Right here. Come on up. Come on. That's it for today.